In this part and in the upcoming ones, we are going to work on designing the feed page, which includes the main view and the cards on the right. On the main view, we are going to start step by step. We are going to first design this placeholder for the stories, and then we are going to design the story pop up. So let us start with the story preview section. Now, in our app, when you navigate to the feed, you are actually navigating to the home controller index action. And we have said that the way the MVC renders a view is that there is a pattern or a path defined in the URL. It would be, for example, just like this, or home, and then index. Then if you press enter, you're going to see that you get the same view because this path is set as the default path for the app. To verify this, you can just close the browser. You go in here to Solution Explorer, go to program.cs. If you scroll down, you're going to see here in line 23 that the default route for the app is so the pattern is basically controller action, but the default value for the controller is home. The default value for the action is index, which is why wherever you type slash home slash index or just leave it empty, you're going to get the same view. What this means is that if we go to home controller, you're going to see in here that we have the index action. And the index action is going to render a view. The view or the pattern is going to be, so since you don't have any predefined values or you don't have any custom values as part of the view method, it means that the view can be found in home and then inside home you have an index file. To verify that, you can just go to Solution Explorer. You can see that in views you have home, which has the same name as our controller. And then you have the index.c sharp HTML, which has the same name as the action. Let us remove the privacy and let us also remove the error because we don't need these actions. And let us go to Solution Explorer, right click and remove privacy. Now let us open the index.c sharp HTML. And this is where we're going to write all the code. If you check the app, you can see that this whole screen can be split into, let's say, two divs. We can have one div for the main content and another div for the items here on the right. What we need to do is that we need to create like either a div, which we can set as a main tag, or we can just use a main tag and define in here a flex box so the items are properly aligned. Let's go back to Visual Studio. In here, the first thing that I'll do, I'm just going to type main. So I'm going to create a main tag. I'm going to also give it an ID, which is going to be site underscore main. And then inside here, I'm going to define a div. And this div is going to be kind of like the flex of the main. And inside here, then I'm going to have two other divs one for the main content and another one for the sidebar on the right. Now let us add some custom classes in here. Let us start with the main tag. And this class basically just sets responsive left margins, adds padding, adjusts the height based on the viewport, and also sets a top margin using custom CSS variables. Now, if you wonder where all these values are coming from, if I just copy this value, and then search, you're going to see that these values have been defined in the tailwind.css. And you can see that, for example, the dash dash m top is defined as four. The next in the div that we want to use as a flex, let us define it to be a flex. So I'll just flex box basically, just save the changes. And here, and these classes just basically make this element a flex container on large screens, adds different gaps between items for extra, extra large screens and other screens, and also sets a maximum width and centers it horizontally. The element also has an ID, JS oversized. On the first div, 
I'm just going to set a max width. To set the max width, you can just add a class. Max width is 680 pixels. And then on the sidebar div, I'm just going to add a class, which is basically going to take the rest of the screen. Now, on this one, we are going to have, we said that we're going to have the placeholder for the story. So, story placeholder. Story placeholder. We're going to have the status placeholder. We're going to have the story pop-up and also the status pop-up. So, that is the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to add the story placeholder. And to do that, you basically just create another div which is going to be used for the stories. I'm just going to define here stories. We can remove this one. And then in here, we can define a bottom margin of 8. So class mb-8. Now, I define it in here, but of course, if you want to define more, you can just change the number. We are going to have an h3. And I'm just going to name it stories i'm going to also add some custom classes and now let us just create a div and this div is basically just going to have the slider where you get to view or you get to preview all the stories let's create a div it's going to create a div i'm going to define the class relative and then I'm going to set the tab index is equal to minus one. And then I'm going to use the UK slider. And then define in here that I want this to be auto play and finite. Also, I'm going to use in here UK dash lightbox and then just an empty string. Now, this is just to define the main div for the slider. But the slider, of course, is going to have a container. So let us define another div and let us give some classes to this div and also define that this div is going to be the container. Just like that. And now what does a container have? It just has some items. And for that, we can use the tag unordered list. And here we're going to have all the items. So this unordered list, I'm going to set a class and also use the UI kit to apply an animation effect. What I've done in here is that I've set the width to 100% plus 14 pixels. Then I've defined in here that I want to use this attribute from the UI kit to apply an animation effect to the children. So list items. And the animation is going to be delayed by 20 milliseconds and it will repeat when the elements comes into the view again so this is what you need to do for the ul now let us define the list item for the list item we are going to define a class and we are going to also define the uk animation fade this class in here adds right padding on the medium screens and this attribute basically just applies a fade animation effect when the element scrolls into view now inside here let us create a div and this div is going to have some classes. And with these classes, we basically just set the width and height to 16 units on medium screens and 12 units on smaller screens. It makes the element fully rounded, positions it relatively, adds a dashed border with a width of two units, uses a grid layout to center its content, and applies a slate 200 background color and a slate 300 border color and prevents it from shrinking. Then you are just going to define that whenever you click this div, you want to toggle the create story, which is going to be the div that we want to show as a pop-up. And then down here, we're just going to use the camera icon. So I use in here this tag, define the name, and also define a class. So, so far what we have done is that we have just created this item that you see in here. Now the other here on the right is kind of like a placeholder, but I'm going to hard code two stories and the story placeholders, as we know, they just show the user profile picture or the profile picture of the user that has created that story. 
for that in here, let me just create another list item. So list item. And then here I'm going to add some classes. And this class just adds right padding of three units on medium screens and two units on smaller screens. It does scale the element by 15% and rotates it by two degrees whenever hovered with a transition duration of 300 milliseconds. And then here we're just going to have an A tag. And the href is going to basically be just the story, let's say the story image URL. And for that, I'm just going to use in this case just the user profile picture. So images and then avatar user.png. And then inside here, we're going to have a div. And this div is also going to have some classes. So this class just says the width and height to 16 units on medium screens and 12 units on smaller screens. It has also positioned the element relatively and adds a border of four units on medium screens and two units on smaller screens. It does apply a shadow, uses a white border color, makes the element fully rounded and hides any overflow content. Now inside this div, let us just display the image of the logged in user or the user that did create the story, which is going to be just a dummy value. So I'll just type in here, source, and then copy this value from here. Let me add one more list item. Let's add one more. So we added three. And now if you want, you can also add just a last item, which is going to be just like a placeholder. And as you can see, it has this animate pulse effect. For that, just another list item. Add to this list item a padding right for medium and also smaller screens. And then inside here, just add a div, which is also going to have some classes, which give the effect that you can see on the screen. Now this is all. I'm just going to save the changes and run the app. So then here you can see that we have the camera, which when we click, is going to open the pop-up. We have the three fake stories and the placeholder on the right. If you click any of the stories, you are going to get the story preview which we're going to fix on the upcoming parts. <laughs>